today. Uh, my talk title, Next Generation Fed Learning for Embracing Chat GPT and Quantum Computing. And thanks for the uh, the introduction. I graduated from Yes University, and since then I've been around uh, many different countries. And now I am located in uh, in uh, Melbourne based, uh, which is uh, probably the southernmost city of the world. And then before joining uh, Dikin, I, I was with uh, Midi and Anis so in uh, at the University of Oulu. So that that, that could be the the opposite side of the world. And uh, in terms of the research, I'm interested in both uh, wireless communication and uh, distributed machine learning. And recently, I'm especially interested in the field of cinematic communication and quantum machine learning. So, so in brief, uh, as many other presenters have already covered, I, I'm uh, interested in the machine learning application for uh, wireless communication system and, and the, the opposite side, vice versa. But the key problem is that uh, uh, the key problem I, I'm interested in is that how to make the machine learning, machine learning is data driven and how to make it uh, driven by the user generated data. And the, each uh, each user say at the net right edge is generating data with a very tiny portion of it, but uh, aggregated them all together thanks to the mass the massive number of the devices and users. The, 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 the total amount of the user data may May even exceed the the the, the, the huge uh, volume of the data stored in the cloud data center and so forth. So, how to leverage those power of the the extremely large uh, private data will be the key concern. So to that end, uh, one simple way is to utilize it for, uh, say, local model training, which is stored at each local user side, which is. Uh, too small to train, say, a good quality model, normally uh, with a high, uh, large model size. On the other hand, uh, those data are generated by the user side. So we, we need to abide by their privacy uh, guarantee and or the requirement. The one uh, in interesting, uh, one, one um, in uh, funny uh, uh, cartoon I'm, I, uh, I, I like, my favorite is uh, given as follows. In this case, um, this uh, guy called named Mati, Mati is willing to take a free sample in a su supermarket corner, but he, uh, he or she doesn't want to, you know, chat with the salesperson. So likewise, in the in the field of say distributed machine learning, the users are willing to take a good and high quality uh, machine learning model, but at the same time, they do not want to share their raw data. So how to achieve this goal while abiding by while satisfying this condition. That is one simple example and, and promising an effective example is uh, what we have already covered, and that's a federal learning. So simply speaking, federal learning, is especially when we focus on its uh, data exchanging nature, then uh, there can be uh, uh, that boils down to the model parameter communication. So simply speaking, they are regularly in, uh, at a regular interval, they are each user is uploading the data into the the, model, the entire model parameters into the parameter server, and then are regularly averaging them together, download back to uh, the local users, and iterating this operation until their convergence. Right. So in this case, the the parameter server is almost uh, do nothing. So we can even ignore and remove this entity while the local users are. Fully decentralized in a fully decentralized way, they can uh, exchange and averaging their model parameters. That's uh, the field of the uh, decentralized uh, distributed and, and or the distributed machine learning that have already also covered by other presenters too. Then uh, let's think about uh, by understanding the the basics of the field learning. Let's now think about the recent two uh, uh, immediate and looming trends. One is uh, the the breakthroughs made by the ChatGPT recently, I think many of you have already uh, heard, uh, at least heard about, and then have experienced the, the, the ChatGPT tools, um, which is uh, amazing. So ChatGPT, as uh, the GPT part is actually uh, coming from the this uh, the, the which was uh, abbreviation of the generative pre-trained transformer. So in in other words, uh, to be more specific, uh, ChatGPT is a large language model based generative AI, AI which is specialized for say chatting application. 
text-based source publication. And there are many other large language, recently proposed large language model-based uh, generative AI applications. One is that the successor of the chat GPT, could, uh, which is based on the chat uh, GPT 3.5, then GPT-4, uh, uh, which was released uh, last month, uh, uh, is specialized for multimodal processing of the uh, large language models. For example, for the given input image of a description of the text description of the web page, you can automatically generate the web page as follows without typing any HTML and CSS language. And then the second uh, example is the, the case of uh, transforming the text into the, the image which is called say DALI or there are many other, I uh, say stable diffusion and so forth. So for example, the input text is, uh, which is called input prompt is called say looking looking through a glass of wine while driving on a highway, then you can uh, obtain this kind of very high quality uh, image while that reflects even a reflection and diffraction and many others. And unfortunately this movie is not uh, play playable, but. The, in this case, this is a minor variation of this. So now it, it can cover the, the moving, a sequence of the image stop. So for the given input area, drone footage of the mountain range, and then you can see some moving image of it. Then let's think about how to, uh, you know, embrace uh, these types of new breakthrough made by the GPT or to be specific, the uh, large blanket model through the lens of the threat learning. Then we can uh, focus on two issues uh, in, uh, in this nature. One is that uh, the, the size of the large language model is, is uh, uh, as it says, extremely large. So for example, this uh, 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 let me say pink trend is showing the, the model size uh, increase over time uh, in the domain of the country vision. So now the state of our uh, vision model is based on mostly based on the vision transformer, and then which consists of the uh, six, uh, 603, uh, 630 millions of the parameters. So on the other hand, the the recent large language model is uh, commonly based on the, the GPT architecture, and then the original version is below uh, one billion model parameters. And now the the state of, of, of the, the the standard one GPT three it consists of one, uh, over one hundred billion. And then GPT-4, the, the exact number is uh, unrevealed, but it, it would be uh, around in the order of the 1 billion. So the, the point is that when we try to, uh, you, to uh, apply the, directly apply the fake learning over uh, into the, the GPT-based architecture, which means that every user is operating the GPT-3, uh, the standard one, as an example, the GPT-3, then for every communication round, they should exchange uh, 175 billion model parameters per communication round until confidence day. So over or, uh, 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 1,000 times or even more. Well, another uh, uh, interesting bit is that GPT architecture is actually based mostly on the transformer architecture. So transformer architecture is a it consists of a, a, a stacked layers among which the most important part is the multi-head uh, uh, multi attention, self-attention part. So uh, interestingly, across different uh, applications and or the modality, they are sharing a very similar architecture. So GPT-3, uh, GPT-4 for text uh, processing and multimodal te uh, text processing it is based on te uh, transformer. DALI texture image is also based on the, the, the a, a large number of transformer uh, uh, blocks. And then the gentle text uh, here, uh, you can see that this unit architecture is, uh, is uh, compromising the, uh, comprising the, the, the transformer architectures too. The, the, the issue is how to cope with this large model size, uh, which is uh, structured uh, in a, a, the form of the transformer architecture. One uh, straightforward way uh, could be uh, to utilize, to exchange not the uh, the entire model, but instead some proxy of it. One uh, important, one uh, available opportunity could be exchanging the model output, which is fixed regardless of the the, the model size. For example, for uh, say MNIST classification, the, the number of class starting from this the digit handwritten digit zero to nine. The regardless of the, the, the use of different models, the, your output dimension is always fixed as 10, right? So utilizing that aspect, one can implement some, some uh, 
disparate learning algorithm, uh, which is similar to pet learning. And, and then, uh, uh, yeah, in, in that respect, I and other co collaborators, including uh, Medi, we have Medi Venice, we have uh, developed the, the algorithm called the fetish distillation. On the other end, uh, uh, split learning, I, I just heard that split learning has also be, uh, been introduced, and the split learning can be uh, seen uh, through the lens that uh, uh, split learning is exchanging the, the output, but not at the very final layer. Uh, or the pen penalty layer, but instead the, the, the hidden layers. So these are the types of the disparate learning algorithm that are exchanging the, and communicating the model outputs rather than the the, the model parameters. The, then the key difference is that model parameters are reflecting on the, the impact of the accumulated data that has been used throughout the training. Or, but on the other hand, the, this model output based communication is related to so each output is associated uh, with each in input data sample. For example, so in, uh, for this reason, if the number of data sample uh, training data sampling increases, then your number of communication runs should also be increasing uh, proportionally. Applying this algorithm under the transform architecture, uh, I have uh, a, a couple of words, and, and then uh, so, so in the domain of computer vision, then vision transformer that is also applying the, the transform architecture, which is the the, the the state of art. And then the key uh, characteristics that is processing the input, not, uh, for example, based on uh, its pixel uh, uh, architecture, but instead the, uh, the, the group of the pixel, which is called patch. And then, then each patch in, and in the original uh, GPD that is originally developed for processing the, the natural language data, uh, now oh, each patch is uh, regarded as a uh, some some proxy of the, the the word in in the in the NLP the natural language processing so which is called a token so each patch can be regarded as a token in the in the in the sentence of the natural language so likewise so by leveraging this property uh, this transformer is processing uh, not only for uh, text data but also for uh, image data too. And then on, on understanding this, uh, we can consider this type of uh, model output based communication. And, and then we can even further improve the performance in terms of the communication efficiency, as an example, by not trans, uh, transmitting the entire patch, but instead only a fraction of it. Uh, it has been well known that uh, for, for many cases, uh, the, 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 patch, the mass patch is just okay for training the entire model. So utilizing this, we can even train multiple clients uh, by tr uh, randomly tra uh, randomly masked uh, the uh, masking uh, those patch patch patchified image data, and then uploading only a small fraction of it. Uh, that will significantly save the not only the communication overhead, but also it can improve the the, the performance thanks to some regularization effect. The, the the problem is that, as I mentioned, the 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 output representation is associated with each data sample. So, which means that if it requires a large number of training data samples, then then you you should communicate uh, 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 that frequently accordingly. So, uh, in this case, the, for the large language model, a uh, simply speaking, the large model, the model size is still large regardless of your, the the use of the model output based communication. So, which means that. It, uh, it, it incurs too long training time. For example, for training a GPT-3 model, it requires uh, uh, 500 billion tokens. So uh, when you implement it using, uh, say, uh, A100 NVIDIA GPU, which is the, the, one of the most expensive uh, chipset, then it would take uh, over a month for training uh, this one, even you run the, the computer uh, 24 hours long. Then the next, uh, the, then uh, the now we we need to seek for uh, compressing the, uh, the the model. And one one way is to utilize the well known model compression technique, the traditional techniques. So uh, that uh, the the most well known one is arguably the the, the model printing technique, which means that when you when you see the neural network architecture, then uh, it, 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 it consists of the the the, the set of layered neurons. And then uh, each neuron is uh, connected with the, the next neighboring layer's neurons uh, by some edges. And these edges, each, each edge is called uh, weight. And then you can see th these weights are looking like uh, some, some branches. So, uh, and then uh, um, deep neural network is normally overparameterized. So, which means that many of them after training will be just redundant. 
So printing is an idea of uh, 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 just uh, removing, intentionally removing some connections that uh, that are uh, uh, that uh, impact uh, affects the the overall performance in, in a minor sense. So uh, one uh, very well known pruning technique is to remove the the, the weight based on its magnitude. Each weight is associated with its magnitude. And then if the magnitude is small after training, then it can be removed as an example. And then you can you can see these types of pruned network. And then actually there are many pruning based uh, fair learning algorithms uh, also exist. But the problem is that even after pruning, uh, for example, ninety percent pruning is a the, for example the the, the state even the state uh, the, the level and order of the state of our pruning algorithms. But even after pruning ninety percent of the GPT three uh, models parameters, then it, uh, which which is still large. As large as which is as large as over six hundred resonant fifty uh, fifty, which is a the standard CNA convolution neural network architecture. So it, uh, it, it, uh, it is obvious that model pruning may not be a good solution for resolving this issue. So now we, we are thinking about uh, to leverage some, some recent recently proposed uh, tools for handling these types of large length model. So to avoid to to cope with the the, the challenges in, uh, induced by this large language model in the in the domain of um, uh, deep learning, now uh, people are utilizing uh, some uh, many parameter efficient fine tuning techniques. Among which one uh, simple one uh, could be uh, uh, this by uh, so called deep feed, uh, which is so this, uh, the the baseline is given as follows: large language model cannot be trained. Uh, by your local model, your local device. For example, one of the 75 billions of model parameters training, as I told you, even utilizing the, the state of art um, uh, and high quality uh, GPU, not in, at, at the, 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 some, some simple, small leverage level, but at the company and industry level, it would take a, a, a say over days and, and over, over, even over months. So, uh, Tra training uh, can be done can be regarded as be, uh, be, uh, some the, some demanding task that can be done uh, already. So we consider that uh, already uh, trained pre-trained um, large language model, but basic pre-trained model, and then upon which we can only we are only interested in further fine tune those model for our uh, specialized for by say application or task of interest. Uh, so to that end, parameter uh, efficient fine tuning technique, uh, as an example, the the BFID is interesting. Uh, fine further fine tuning uh, on, uh, by by adjust uh, the pre trained model by only adjusting the bias of uh, the 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 model. So given uh, given this architecture, uh, weights are uh, are connecting its neurons and the next generation of neurons, and so number of weights are extremely large. On the other end, the bias is applied uh, for each layer. So the total number of bias in this case is one, two, three, four. That that's all. So compared to the, the total number of uh, weights, the bias, the number of biases is, is extremely small. So utilizing that, one can uh, fine tune the already trained, pre-trained uh, large language model by all, uh, with a very fast, uh, say, read uh, further training and and or the fine tuning speed. Another uh, compelling and uh, approach is called a uh, LoRa, uh, which which means that low rank adaptation. So uh, here we consider that the, the, the again the pre-trained model here by zero, and then uh, we can find further fine tune uh, the, the model, and then now we have the fine tuned model. And then the difference between the fine the the desired fine tuned model and the pre-trained model can be uh, defined as a this delta parameter. And then we can decompose this data parameter into the multiplication of two row, row sorry, low rank matrices. So, a multi, so each low rank matrix is uh, easier uh, to train and in terms of the cost and the time. So by leveraging this idea, one can only further fine tune while fixing everything and only fine tune these two small matrices and then superimpose the, the multiplication of it on, on top of it the original pre-trained model. And then uh, to the which one can only, as long as everybody is sharing the already pre-trained model, which is common, and then uh, the each user can only fine tune these two matrices and then, then exchanging 
uh, uh, these two matrices separately. And then uh, that, that would significantly reduce the communication overhead and then trading time. So as an example, uh, let's revisit the GPT-3 architecture. Then the original GPT-3 uh, model uh, includes a number of parameters, uh, 175 billion. On the other hand, the, the, for the bias training, the number of biases is only uh, one, uh, 14 million. And then even the, for the LoRa, the number of uh, trainable parameters in, in this sense would be only, uh, say, uh, 4 million, So we, which is, would correspond to over 99 Point nine nine say uh, five uh, percent compression, so which could be a propensity diversion. And then uh, from the perspective of the fed learning, then if uh, the primary server is collecting uh, those type of uh, uh, um, uh, fine, uh, uh, some parameters, the parameter efficiently find compressed uh, parameters, right? And then uh, the, the 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 role of primary server is. Uh, merge, aggregating and merging those models and then uh, sending it back to the, each user and iterating it, right? And then uh, what if we uh, uh, merge uh, this fine-tuned model uh, at the parameter server, then what happens could be uh, looking like this. In the domain of computer vision, the, 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 the current standard way of training is a LoRa. And then when, when imagine, suppose that there is a the one model that is originally trained for uh, processing uh, th this photo size for generating these photo images on the other end, the other one is trained for this carbon image. And then when we, uh, in, in, uh, surprisingly, when you simply uh, adding them together uh, over the, not all over the, the sample domain, but over the uh, this parameter domain, then the mixture of model is, is generating these types of, you know, mixture style of it. So we can also expect that a mixture of uh, mixture uh, mixing operations at the parameter server would result in uh, some some uh, generating uh, further improving the expressive uh, expressivity of the generative model as an example. So this could be uh, one say futuristic application of the next generation of the federal learning, which can be uh, tentatively called say federal fine tuning as an example. And uh, time is running out, so I'll be co uh, covering the next part very quickly. So another emerge, uh, looming um, um, breakthrough could be quantum computing. So what if we can, uh, so the question is, uh, can we, uh, you know, incorporate uh, th this new breakthrough uh, within, the, uh, within the umbrella of the federal planning will be the next question. And then actually, uh, quantum quantum uh, quantum computing and to be specific quantum machine learning has been uh, recently has gained lots of attention the the, the thing is that uh, people uh, the, uh, it is common to quantify the capability of the the quantum computing by, by only by counting its basic unit the number of basic unit which is a qubits so when the number of qubits is very small then the the, the output will be quite erroneous so on the other hand if it's sufficiently large then we can apply some error correction techniques so given this uh, nature uh over 1000 1, the use of 1000 qubit will be uh, uh often uh, uh, regarded as the moment when we uh, witness the, the quantum supremacy over the classical quantum computing algorithm. So uh, according to the IBM's uh, quantum computing uh, development plan, they have uh, already achieved uh, the over uh, 100 qubits computer last year. And then in this year, they are planning to release uh, and announce the 1000 qubit, the thousand level uh, qubit computer. So then perhaps in the, the the very near future, we we may witness some some you know, see crossing point in between the classical and quantum machine. And that's the reason why I'm also per personally interested in uh, this high risk high return uh, risk area. Then compared to the classical uh, neural network architecture. Uh, in, in the the domain of quantum machine learning, uh, the, there there is a, a, also say say some consensual. So in, in the classical machine learning, uh, the neural network architecture in, in, uh, in old days, neural network architecture is one of the the possible models. But now it is a de facto standard. Likewise, in the quantum machine learning, there there has been lots of uh, different configuration. But among which now the the parameterized quantum circuit is regarded as a the de facto standard model. Then, uh, which looks quite similar, but the, the difference is that the input is not directly fed into uh, the, the uh, 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 this model, but instead the qubit is always flowing, while the input is uh, embedded into these qubits. So, so that's the reason why it, this is a, not a network, neural network, but instead it's a circuit. 
the, the qubit the qubits are always flow and then you can only man manipulate the states of the the qubit by for re say in, uh, reflecting your input for adjusting and so forth and there then it, it the, the circuit is equipped with multiple controllable uh, nodes and then the controlling parameter is uh, can be can be uh, trainable so that's so, so the, 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 uh, through which we can see some analogy between the classical neural network architecture and the, the uh, the parameter of quantum circuit. So uh, it, quantum circuit, one another uh, interesting uh, bit is that uh, not only the, uh, the, uh, the, the model parameter in, in this case, but uh, so the model parameter training can be uh, analogous to the, the training, the, uh, the angles of the, uh, of, the, of the parameter circuits. On the other hand, uh, in, in quantum uh, machine learning and computing, there is another measurement step. So quantum state cannot be directly uh, are, are not a deterministic, but instead we can, you can measure it uh, based on its static state. So for the measurement, it requires some some axis, and then uh, not only the the angles of the the, uh, the the circuit, but also the measurement axis itself can also be trainable. So considering uh, so combining it and uh, leveraging these two different types of uh, degrees of freedom for uh, uh, simultaneously, then we can achieve, for example, uh, 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 we, we can we can uh, consider one um, neural network is divided into two parts, and then uh, one part can be trained utilizing the one part is uh, trained utilizing the angle, and the other one is trained with respect to the pole. Then, uh, for example, the when the the communication bandwidth is quite sufficient, then we can only exchange the uh, we can exchange both the, the pole trained and the angle trained parameters. On the other hand, the bandwidth is quite too limited, or the channel quality is too bad, energy is limited, and then in, that, in this case, only uh, by compromising uh, the the accuracy, we can only instead uh, alternatively exchange the pole parameters only. And the last but uh, least, one very interesting quantum um, machine learning based application could be to, to utilize uh, the uh, this quantum um, angle and pole training based uh, approach. And then the quantum state can be represented uh, uh, in uh, over uh, the, the surface of this ball, which is called Bloch sphere. And then this ball, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, over this ball, in this ball, we can all, uh, change the angle, or you can also change the the the, the pole or the axis. And then, uh, when when you train this pole, and then it, it, is it possible? Uh, still, it, it, uh, all the points and the the axis exist uh, within this ball. So by leveraging this, you can even re uh, inverse uh, this operation. So this is. Uh, uh, applying this uh, rule, uh, the, the overall architecture of the quantum uh, quantum neural network can be regarded as a, a a memory. So so you can write it write the the address by utilizing the 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 pole angle, and then for each given pole angle, your your uh, angle parameters could be regarded as a model implementation. So uh, utilizing this aspect, you can find you can implement some fine tuning that is invertible. So here's a conclusion. Uh, Federated learning can, is, a, is, is still a promising uh, uh, framework and pa paradigm. And then for the uh, considering the, the looming and immediate breakthroughs say, incurred by the GPD and the quantum computing, then uh, for learning can be uh, is expected to be further evolved. For example, when we consider the the, uh, uh, the the incorporation of the large language model in the context of the federated learning, then uh, we can consider the federated fine tuning uh, directions. And then uh, when we consider the the aviation of the quantum machine learning and federated learning, then uh, by leveraging just some quantum the 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 the, the pole memory idea, then we can implement this not only uh, single direction but also the, the bidirectional in invertible fine tuning. Uh, that might be useful for adapting to the dynamic uh, environment. So uh, the the perhaps we can combine them all together at some point when we when we witness the the, the moment of the, the quantum supremacy as an example. Then at, at that moment, then what we will see could be say uh, combining them all together, the invertible federated fine tuning. So that could be uh, this summarized. Uh, 
what I have done and what I'm currently interested in and what I'm expecting for our, uh, my and uh, say my other with our, my, my other colleagues our uh, future work. Thank you very much. Okay, what is the factors that affect the quality of uh, feature vision tra transformer? Um, yeah, nice question, but it's a bit hard to answer. The, the reason is that uh, quality, uh, what, uh, there are a variety of uh, quality measures. So for example, uh, and, and then that depends on the, the application. So um, how can I say, um, the, the, if the, 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 let me give an example. Uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in this case, uh, we can consider a um, classification task uh, as usual. So you, you can simply replace the, the, the standard computer vision task, uh, not using uh, standard uh, uh, computer vision task with uh, the standard architecture, which is a CNN, uh, with uh, this uh, VIT. So the, the difference is uh, the only the architecture, but uh, your, your, your task will be the same. So in, in this case, the, the, the classification accuracy uh, will be the, the uh, will be the, the, the figure of Mary measuring the quality of the this feature transformer. Then uh, that would depend uh, the number of uh, so trans so, uh, visual transformer is uh, the structure of the visual transformer is uh, is based on uh, you know many different layers, but amongst the key the, the key the key role is played by the 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 the, the multi the, the transformer the multi attention uh, architecture then the number of attention heads uh, is also uh, significantly affecting the the quality and the number of patches is also uh, uh, affecting the, the the performance that is related to the resolution so normally we we use say 28 by 28 uh, patches. But for some cases, when we, we are re, uh, we are required to process a gigapixel of the the input image, then uh, this might not be sufficient. Then one one technique is to consider some hierarchical processing way. So at the very beginning, you can process it, you know, very coarse way, and then in the next level, then you can consider even uh, fine grained uh, resolution and so forth. So architecture is affecting the performance. And then the, the key architectural uh, parameters could be say the number of heads and the, the, the token size, which is the number of patches and, and their mixture of them and many others. And then even uh, not, not only the architecture, but also the training algorithm affects the performance as usual. And then your data set quality, the number of data also affecting the quality, so, so many others. And then the, the figure of merit for measuring the quality of the this feature for transformer is is uh, just as, as the same as the usual. It it, it is dip, uh, determined not by the architecture but by the the the, the, the task of your interest. And then what is the application that can be used? Uh, quantum machine learning. Uh, okay. So likewise, quantum machine learning is a, a is a tool and framework for. Uh, that is based on the uh, parameterized quantum circuit, and uh, and uh, with with uh, the flowing qubits. So in, so in this case, uh, the application uh, we can we can simply speaking we can we can apply a parameterized quantum circuit to say quantum machine learning to any possible uh, class uh, applications that has been uh, have been originally implemented utilizing the classical machine learning. Then the probably the the your intended question might be at which task, uh, for example, one can observe the, the quantum supremacy over the, uh, for, for that given application. Then um, uh, this is quite uh, a tricky to answer. One, is, one reason is that currently we haven't re uh, reached uh, the milestone of uh, utilizing the, let's say, over 1000 qubit level. Uh, so currently the, the is still very noisy. And then the number of uh, your your embedding input is quite limited. So once we have uh, uh, achieved that level, the the use of a, a sufficiently large number of qubits, then you will see in many different uh, applications the quantum machine learning might uh, be uh, co competitive and or even uh, surpass the performance uh, that of the classical machine learning. And then one another uh, example uh, where where uh, the quantum machine learning will be uh, 
uh, preferable uh, or even over the classical machine it could be uh, the, the the use of this different architecture rather than the the use of the number of qubits and its, its expressivity. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, this problem memory based architecture might be useful for in this case for in the context of fed learning uh, we utilize it for uh, reducing the communication overhead and, me and memory on the other end the quantum pole memory can also be utilized for uh, for example some reinforced learning based uh, scenarios at which uh, 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 when when the agent is encountering a new environment, then uh, one may be easily forget, which is called a cut of constantly forgetting. But if the, your memory can be invertible, then you can you can uh, invert uh, uh, your your memory into the, your previous, and then you can very quickly fine tune the, your model. Here, the the trainable parameter is only one single parameter, uh, so it, it'll be quite quite useful for adapting to the the new new and new and uh say time very environment that might be one promising any uh, interesting applications really thank you thank you for this do you have a question Lisa? Yes, you know, uh, hi Hello. hi uh it's been a long time <laughs> sure. uh, I have a few technical questions, but that is, uh, I will, I can ask them yeah. offline. There's one question mm -hmm. that many of the audience here will benefit from, so I will go ahead and ask it. So uh, as many of the audience today are uh, uh, undergraduate students who are about to graduate, and some mm -hmm. of them, they to continue their uh, planning, uh, they they would like to continue their academic uh, path. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you as a, an assistant professor and uh, researcher in this field, what like uh, what do you think like the set of skills that uh, I mean? Do you have any recommendation, any advice? What kind of skills they need to obtain? Where they need to like. Uh, uh, improve themselves. If you can, uh, I wanted to ask this question also to uh, Mehdi and Vanit, but we kept running, like we kept lacking behind in, in, in the time, but we we have to ask it to someone. So I <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, very good question and very 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 uh, hard question <laughs> to answer. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, skill it is quite difficult to uh, define the 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 say most useful uh, skills but my uh, my point is that my suggestion personal suggestion is that uh, it is not a matter of uh, not, not a matter of your your uh, the hard skills but but instead your soft skill is also important uh, in other words uh, when you when you work hard I, I know everybody works hard so and then and then everybody has uh, high, especially uh, uh, with this say precision Institute, Many uh, most of the students are already uh, ca you know capable of um, you know performing a, a outstanding um, research works. So other than this, uh, say research uh, skills, um, um, my, my point is that your way of presentation is also important, and then your your your, your networking is also important. And then uh, the the reason is that the what we are doing, especially uh, in within the scope of the engineering. We, uh, we are we are doing something for convincing some others in terms uh, in terms of your your uh, develop algorithm develop product and so forth even the paper is 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 tr is trying to propose one idea uh, to make some others being convinced so in this perspective uh even if your develop algorithm is extremely novel and and, and outstanding if the, that is not well written, uh, say in, in 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 a given format, which is a paper or your say video recording and so forth, then uh, th then people uh, may uh, uh, unfortunately ignore you know that uh, pr precious outcome. So in that perspective, your way of writing, your way of presentation, visualization is also important. And then at the same time, when you uh, try to get a say faculty position like me, then you'll be interviewed by the 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 some some yes so evaluation committee and likewise you if you you are willing to join some some promising companies and then yeah there will be uh, then then you will be interviewed right then they'll they will be examining you not based on 
uh, your one single uh, idea or the task, but instead the, uh, the say the portfolio of it, right? So you you should present uh, and com uh, make the, your uh, uh, committee convinced uh, by your uh, skills and performance within say very uh, limited time uh, and uh, right say given say 10 minutes or for some lucky case say 30 minutes then to do so you need uh, your uh, your describing the technical details might not be sufficient due to the limited time or or their uh, limited uh, uh, backgrounds and different backgrounds but instead uh, you need to keep improving uh, keep preparing uh, you say your portfolio and then at the same time you should understand the sort of line of the, your what you have done and why I'm doing this work for what purpose and then what what is the connection of this work and my previous work is not uh, the 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 worst answer is that I have chosen my research topic totally randomly and arbitrarily or simply satisfied my supervisor and both or some uh, and based on while, while following some recent trend that is not a good answer so instead you can self ask some questions why. Uh, why I'm doing this, uh, you know, research, and then trying to keep, uh, you know, updating your portfolio is also important, and then that is also useful for guiding your research directions too. So yeah, the these, you know, uh, 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 parts would be also uh, important. I, I, I am pretty sure that many other, you know, uh, mentors can can uh, can provide a, uh, uh, you know, and suggest another good skills in terms of the say hard skill for example your coding expertise and and and, and mathematical uh, expertise and, and and so forth thank you thanks for giving